Are you looking for techniques on how to make a color chart with either oil, watercolor, or acrylic? Well, maybe you're interested in this 24 color chart that I just watched in of a new group of Holbein watercolor paints that I just bought. And I'll be sharing with you tips, strategies, and all the material that you need so you can do your own color chart. So let's talk supplies. What you need for a color chart are rulers of various sizes. I like the centimeter ruler, pencil, eraser, watercolor pad. I prefer the spiral because I put all of my watercolor charts in one pad. Watercolors, of course, a flat brush that's thin, and waterproof pins. And then, of course, you need to arrange all of the colors that you have in an order that makes sense to you. And for me, typically, I start with the yellow, move to the oranges and reds, over to the purple, blue, greens, and then the earth tones. And this particular order is how I'm going to be putting them in my new palette, which you see I have a gap in the first little square. And that gap is because maybe in the future I need to put in more Hansa yellow, I use a lot of it, or maybe I want to maybe buy a lemon yellow, something even lighter, I don't know. There's also a gap between the red and the purple because I think there's a big leap in the color and I have two extra little squares in my palette and I don't really need to use them all. Okay, so it's now time to swatch out those colors and I let the colors dry last night so they're a little bit sticky dry. So I was hydrating them and then Ew. I didn't use a waterproof pin on my swatch card. Oh my goodness. The Pilot pen I thought was waterproof. It's not, but I'm so happy this happened instead of on the 24 chart because that would have taken a lot of time to remake. This is really simple to remake. So actually when I remade it, I just put the colors down first and then I put the writing on top of the colors and it looked right and I was using the waterproof when I when I wrote it the second time. So this is the watercolor paper that I'm using and it's by the way 200 gram not 300 grams so it doesn't take a you know huge beating with water but it's the size that I wanted and if I'm just swatching colors it's fine. So the size is 14 and a half by 21 and a quarter inches and that's quite large. It's a spiral so that I can keep all of my watercolor collections in there. For example, Daniel Smith, Inktense, and a couple others, and now my Holbein. And so I measured everything out very carefully, paying attention to 24 grids I needed, a little bit at the top and the side for writing, and then for color swatching. And of course this time I'm going to be using my waterproof pens. And I have two Sharpies here of two different sizes. So here is my chart. It's already been labeled on the left side where I put all of the names of the colors in the correct order, the same order that they are in my palette, my mini palette. And I've also given a quick like nickname at the top. Okay, so here's a trick when I am going to be swatching in those colors. Rather than use the palette and mixing on a plate for each one, I actually dot in for, this is a 24 color chart, so I dot in 24 colors of one pigment. This is the Hansa Yellow. And then for the remaining 23 colors, I just put one dot for each representative Hansa Yellow dot. And here you can see the finished dotting process. And now what I'm going to do is just apply water for each dot and paint it in the appropriate square. And of course before I can do that I have to have the correct brush and so here I have a collection of various brushes. I have a angle, a couple of flats, I have three flats actually, one is very wide, very thick, and then left in my hand I have on the right a Princeton and on the left is a Korean brand, but it doesn't matter the brand so much, it has to do with the appearance and how easy it is to use. And that Korean brand, which is the Wahong, is very thin, and so I can get sharp edges with it. With the Princeton, I can't quite get the same very sharp edge. Okay, so this is just blocking in the Hansa. This is the first one, and for the Hansa, I'm just kind of being careful to get in the square and just 
FYI, I put a little edging around each one so that the colors aren't next to each other. There's going to be a white edge around each of those. And this is mixing in what, the deep yellow and the Hansa mix. And after each time, I have to rinse my brush. And right here, I just diluted it. And on the upper part, I am going to do a diluted version of the same pigment. And right now, I am getting a little bit more water on my brush because that particular swatch was a little heavy in pigmentation. So I, I did a little bit of lifting there. So on the left, once again, I am going to have the heavier pigmentation. And on the upper part, it's going to be more pastel, so we can see what it's like to have a diluted version. I use my color charts all the time. When I'm going to be painting a picture and I'm trying to find a limited palette of maybe three, four, or five colors, what do I do? I reference my color chart and find out the colors that would blend very nicely. And I very often reference my color charts for many reasons, how to make a black or how to um, blend purples, whatever. Okay, so this is just another faster version. And one more tip, when you're doing your color charts or any kind of painting, I highly recommend two glasses of water. In one glass, you're going to in initially rinse out the excess pigment, which will probably be a lot. And in the second one, you're going to have a lot of clear water so that you can continue you know, painting without contaminating your colors. At this time, I'm just going to turn on the music. And for those interested, you can watch the swatching. And for those of you who would like to skip ahead, I would highly recommend that you go to the end and pick up my two comments related to the Holbein watercolors in general. Even though I'm only swatching out 24 colors, I believe these two comments are specific to Holbein overall. So anyway guys, happy listening or happy picking up information.
any surprises? Well, I have to say, yes, there were. And probably the biggest was the intensity of the colors. I was totally unprepared for that. As you can see from this color chart, there's a lot of black. Well, it looks like black is just very intense dark colors. And so, in the future, I have to remind myself to wash them out more. Perhaps the colors dry darker than when they're wet, I'm not sure, but when they're washed out, they are lovely. All of the colors are vibrant and have just beautiful glow that I was really surprised. Yes, I'm very happy with this. In the future, I will be throwing some of these colors out, but this is a great first 24 Holbein set for me. The second surprise is about the muddy colors. I had met someone online who seemed to be very knowledgeable about colors, and she had said that Holbein doesn't really have muddy colors, despite that a lot of the pigments do have two and three color blends, and you're mixing those with other two and three color blends. I was really intrigued, and so I had to try that out. And yes, I have to agree that very few muddy colors did appear in this set, much to my surprise. And here you can see that I do have a lot of pigment blends. At first I was picking out colors that are transparent and single pigment, but that was kind of hard and that's why I've avoided Holbein for so long, because of their many pigment blends. It's really hard to buy a whole set, you know, a sizable set, with only transparents. Okay, so here you can look at this, and if you'll look for the muddy colors, it's kind of hard to see from this eagle eye view, so I can only say that there was one pigment, one pigment that I could clearly say had muddy colors, and that was cadmium green pale. And there were just three or four that I would consider to be muddy, and those are blends of the red. All of the others are dusky or earthy, but they still have a vibrancy, and I wouldn't call them muddy at all. And so, yeah, I would agree with this lady that Holbein doesn't really, from my 24 color swatch, have many muddy colors. Hi guys, I hope you've gained some information about Holbein watercolors or color swatching. And if I missed some information that you already know related to Holbein or watercolor swatching, please make comments below. Also for those interested in color theory, which is related, I have a video on analogous colors. Maybe you would like to check that out and I will link it right here. And guys, I will see you again.